Peace everyone, Unmask Art here, and welcome back to another art club project. This one here is a Swiss landscape. A friend of mine took this photo while visiting Switzerland, and when he showed it to me, I just knew that I had to recreate it. And so we did this project a little while ago, just finished it up. And right here, I'm just doing the sky, I'm putting in the sky with some pan pastel, and you can see the tape coming across. I actually, I usually use masking film for my pastel projects to get, you know, those sharp edges and sort of block off some areas. And I just needed to do the mountains in this one, so there wasn't a whole lot. And so I thought, well, not why not just use some of my uh, low tack painters tape instead of utilizing my my masking film because the masking film, if you've ever purchased it before is rather expensive so I just laid a piece of a couple pieces of tape across the mountain range you can still see the the graphite lines through the tape because it's rather translucent and so I just took an exacto knife I cut that little shape of the mountain top out and uh, it worked beautifully so it was it was nice to just sort of find that little that little trick in this project to, to save me to save me a little bit of my masking film and as you can see it it left a very sharp clean line it worked really really well and I'll definitely I'll definitely be using that in the future you know I'll keep that in mind for any time that I have a a simple area that I want to block off with my pastels I mean you can see I I always use tape for the border of my pastel projects but I never really utilized cutting shapes out of the the tape so it was just a nice little trick feel free to use it yourself uh, now that the sky is done with the pan pastels I just wanted to use the pan pastels for the sky get that you know soft gradient of, of color and then I switched to the Carbothello pastel pencils and I, I use the pastel pencils for the remainder of this project I just block in some of the general color shapes of the mountains. Uh, we're dealing with a little bit of a, a sunrise or a sunset type of scenery here. I feel like it's more of a sunrise if I were to clarify. I'd say it's kind of a sunrise with those colors in the sky. And so you have that light just hitting the very tops of some of those those mountains there that's where you get that sort of red orange glow and then the rest of the mountains of course nice cool blue and purple tones for the shadows and the main the main idea here is to just block in those two separate temperatures in the mountains so you get the warm colors where the light's hitting the cooler colors where the shadow is and then just a few general random shapes to create a little bit of texture they are mountains after all so they're kind of rocky and so i just do a few layers of my colors here i used a pretty restrictive color palette for this project i even ended up not adding necessary additional colors just for the sake of of sort of preserving the color harmony uh, so I, I end up reusing the colors from the mountains themselves in the rest of the project uh, like the church and the trees just to really bring all of the colors together uh, of course I of course I add some additional greens here for the grass but I try not to keep I, I try not to let the grass be too bright so I tone it down with some of those bluish purple tones from the mountain and also some of the like, orange yellow uh, ochre colors. So I put in the first layer of grass and then I, I jump back and I do the little river there and uh, just put in a few horizontal lines in the river to give it a little bit of flow, sort of make it look like the water is moving. Uh, but then I, I jump back to the grass, and the grass is a process of just a bunch of dashes, some a lot of vertical dashes to sort of imply that 
that grassy texture. And I just use pretty much all of the colors. Uh, I use the green, I use the blue, I use some black and uh, the orange ochre color. And I just sprinkle these colors throughout the grass to sort of make it look as natural as I could. Uh, if you spend if you spend a lot of time on your grass, you're going to you're going to benefit from it gradually becoming more realistic looking. I sort of stopped uh, before adding too many layers to the grass to get it really realistic. I sort of kind of liked it the way that it it ended up here, and so I decided to stop there and not not take it any further or, or move it any closer to realism because it's sort of just a process of layering those dashes that it gets closer and closer to realism. And then I decided to jump into the foliage and I started with this tree and bush on the left side. And you'll see I'm, I'm using all of the colors. Like I, you, you see there, I was using the even the blue and creating textures. I'm just creating lots of little colors and dots and textures throughout the trees because I really wanted the trees to have a nice in focus kind of effect. They they sort of dominate the edges of the project. So I, I didn't wanna I didn't wanna be lazy with them. So I, I, I wanted to increase the amount of textures and and just uniqueness in them. Uh, the other thing that I did different between the left side foliage and the right side foliage is on the right side I decided to do the base layer less in green and more in the ochre color just to sort of give subtle differentiation between the kinds of trees and the color of the leaves so that's what I did there you can see the, the foliage on the left is a bit greener whereas the foliage on the right is a bit more of that ochre color and I think it just sort of makes the trees feel a little bit different, which I like. Now, after I finish all the foliage, I get to fill in the little church. And this one, so the colors that are in the actual photo uh, are different than what I end up using for the church. Now, the church is white, and so I still make it white. But here you can see I'm doing the little steeple and the steeple was red in the reference photo, but I, I made a conscious decision to not add any more additional colors to the project. So I'm doing a lot of mixing here with the colors that I've used so far. I think we only used about 11 colors, if I remember correctly, like 11 or 12 colors in this entire project. And so I just continued to reuse them. And so instead of making the the roof red and the steeple red uh, i just reused the clay rose color from the mountains and mixed it with like some grays and some of the green and some of the blue and i just sort of splashed these colors about until i got this result and now for everybody's favorite part the untaping i always like to reveal the clean edges that the tape the tape makes and the nice clean borders it just it's the finishing touch of the project overall and here you go here's the the final piece i hope that you enjoyed it if you want to follow along on this tutorial check out the art club i'll have links for that in the description uh, you can follow along on this project from the beginning to the end all in real time and i'll see you next time take care peace